Hi, my name is Ahmad Al-Assad and in this video I will go through the using code analysis with Visual Studio 2012 to improve code quality hands-on lab. This video has been recorded for hands-on visualstudio.com. The code analysis feature of Visual Studio performs static code analysis on code to help developers identify potential design, globalization, interoperability, performance, security, and a host of other categories of potential problems. Code analysis can be run manually at any time from within Visual Studio IDE, or even set up to automatically run as part of a team build or check-in policy for Team Foundation Server. In this lab, you will be introduced to code analysis, how to configure rule sets, and finally how to suppress specific rules at a project and source code level. Note that code analysis can be found in the professional, premium, and ultimate editions of Visual Studio 2012. A subset of the most critical code analysis warnings are included in the Express Edition for free. This applies to the C++, C Sharp, and Visual Basic Code Analysis. To go through the lab, you need to download the Visual Studio 2012 Virtual Machine provided by Microsoft. This lab consists of two exercises. The first exercise is an introduction to code analysis, whereas the second one is about suppressing code analysis warnings. Exercise number one, introduction to code analysis. In this exercise, you will learn about the code analysis feature in Visual Studio 2012. By configuring the rule set used, performing code analysis on a sample project, and addressing some of the warnings that are raised. Now let's switch to the virtual machine. Now let's switch to the virtual machine. We're gonna log in as Julia. Then open Visual Studio 2012. Now let's open the fabric-fiber.callcenter solution. We're gonna open it from source control. Once the solution is loaded, rebuild it. Go to Solution Explorer, select the Fabricom Fiber.Web project, go to the Analyze menu, and click on Configure Code Analysis for Fabricom Fiber.Web. Note that the Code Analysis tab allows you to choose from sets of rules, rather than picking and choosing from one flat list of rules. In Visual Studio 2012, Professional, Premium, or Ultimate Editions, customer rule sets for C++ projects can be created. Now let's run code analysis for the Fabricam Fiber.Web projects. Select the project in Team Explorer, right click on the project, and click on Run Code Analysis. Note that this may take few minutes to complete. The code analysis feature runs through static code analysis rules as defined by Microsoft and displays the results in the code analysis window. Note the code analysis rules can also be configured to show up as errors instead of warnings. To do so, open the rule set and in the action column choose error instead of warning. The code analysis window contains a keyword filter text box where you can filter code analysis results 
on warning number, text and the title or message of the warning, as well as file name or function name. Let's give it a try. In the lab, we're choosing warning code CA1804. Now double click on the warning and by doing so, Visual Studio will take us to the code location that generates that warning. Now let's fix the code to resolve the warning. In this case, we need to remove the declaration of the report variable. Now let's rerun the code analysis for the project. Notice that we have one less warning and if we search for that warning it doesn't exist and by doing so we reach the end of exercise number one. Exercise number two suppressing code analysis warnings. In this exercise you will learn how to suppress code analysis warnings at the project and the source level. Now let's switch the virtual machine. In the code analysis window, select the first three warnings that are marked with a global. The global keyword indicates that the warnings are not associated with a file. You usually want to suppress a code analysis warning if you don't want to address the selected issues and you no longer want them to appear when code analysis executes. Now to suppress those warnings, right click on them, select suppress message and click on in suppression file. This will add assembly level metadata to a project level global suppressions.cs file. Now let's go to the code analysis window and do another fix. Scroll all the way down and double click on code CA1704 which indicates that there is a spelling error. Right click on the parameter name, refactor and click on the rename menu item and replace the lowercase t with an uppercase t and click OK. In the preview changes dash rename window, review the proposed changes and select the apply button to complete the refactoring process. Now let's imagine we want to suppress the next code analysis warning. Right click on the warning, select suppress messages and let's say we want to suppress it in the source file this time and instead of the suppression file. Notice that the suppress message attribute has been added to the method. Now save the file and rerun the code analysis on the project. Notice that the number of warnings went down to 27. At this point there are additional code analysis warnings that we could address, but imagine that we simply want to ignore the remaining items for now. Click on the settings button in the code analysis window. Now change the rule set for the Fabricom Fiber.web project from the Microsoft All Rules to the Microsoft Managed Minimum Rules. Click Apply and OK to close the window. Now let's rerun the code analysis on the project. Notice that code analysis didn't find any issues with the code. The warnings that appear as a result of using this rule set are more likely to be problematic during runtime. And this is the end of exercise number two in the lab. In this lab we learned about the code analysis feature. We learned how to configure the code analysis feature. We also learned how to run code analysis manually on a certain project. We also learned how to suppress a code analysis code at the global level.
and at the file level. And at the end of this video, I would like to thank you for watching.